This week on Sports Talk Live, we're talking the Boogie Cousins trade, NBA All-Star Game, Mid-Season Awards, and more. This is Sports Talk Live. Let's get into it. Welcome to Sports Talk Live. I'm Andrew Klon, and here are my esteemed co-hosts, Miles Garvey and Devin Rogan. Today, uh, let's just start right into it. The DeMarcus Cousins trade. DeMarcus Cousins got traded from the Sacramento Kings to the New Orleans Pelicans for, strictly speaking, actual real players, um, but we'll talk about that. He and Omri Caspi, small forward for the Kings, got traded to the Pelicans for Buddy Heald, Tyreek Evans, Langston Galloway, a first round pick, and a second round pick. Guys, what do you think of it? Um, I think that this is highway robbery. They basically got DeMarcus Cousins, one of the top 10 players in the league right now, uh, best center in the league for a um, uh, can of Coke and a Nutter Butter. Uh, Tyreek Evans, a player who was always hurt, has three surgeries on the same knee. Uh, Buddy Heald, who was the sixth pick in this year's draft, already given up on him. Langston Galloway, who's going to be waived, and two picks that are not going to be a second round pick and a first round pick that's going to be late first round. Uh, this is a win for the New Orleans Pelicans all the way, especially if it doesn't work. They gave up nothing for Boogie, and they can either trade him before the deadline next year or get rid of him as he is a free agent after next year. Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely agree with uh, Miles. I think that. The Pelicans definitely robbed the Kings. The Kings really got nothing out of this trade, and now the Pelicans have two of the top big men in the NBA, and it'll definitely attract guards over the off seasons to come, definitely. especially if <clears throat> Boogie and Anthony Davis work out, and if they can bring in those guards, they'll become an elite basketball team in the West. Especially with Drew Holiday, who is averaging like 16 points and 7.5 and assists. You expect those, maybe the numbers for points-wise going down, but the assist numbers with yep. Boogie, and DeMar er, Boogie and Anthony Davis, the two best big men in the league, to go up and probably get around 9. And he's a great point guard. He's a free, he's a, not a great point guard, but a good point guard, and he's a free agent after this year. But with those two guys, it is likely that they bring him back. Absolutely, and who, why wouldn't he want to come back exactly. and play with Brow and uh, Boogie? Do you think that Cousins and Davis they're both kind of playing a lot of center this year do you think they can both you know coexist together uh, I definitely think they can coexist to e with each other because I think that Anthony Davis is a natural power forward and he him going back to his natural position will make him a better player they already combined for 55 and a half points and combined for 22 and a half rebounds so they're definitely going to dominate in the paint this year yeah uh, and it's not like they're both traditional back to the basket, give me the ball in the post, big yeah. guys. Yeah. They're both, uh, they both can play outside very well. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins has a better three-point game. I would say that uh, Anthony Davis probably has the better uh, mid-range game. But DeMarcus Cousins is shooting 35% from three and has actually made more threes than uh, Buddy Heald, who New Orleans just traded away. Yeah. And Vlade Divac, uh, the general manager for the Kings, said uh, that... Buddy Heald was the next Steph Curry. Well, you just traded away DeMarcus Cousins, who has made more three-pointers <laughs> than the next Steph Curry. Yeah, let, let, so. let's talk about that for a minute. Um, Vivek Ranadive, the Kings owner, and Vlade both said this week that they are super high on Buddy Heald. Yeah. They're, they're, they, like you said, the next Steph Curry. Yeah. What, do you guys, what do you guys think of that? That, that seems ridiculous. He, doesn't, he hasn't been playing. Um, I think it's obviously ridiculous. He, became, he was a one-dimensional player in college as a three-point shooter. And then also, now he's become not even that. He can't. He hasn't been shooting the three as well in the NBA. And I just how I, he hasn't played a full year, and he can obviously develop. Yeah. But as of right now, this looks terrible. Yeah, I agree. Um, just to clear up a couple things on that, the uh, Kings got that first round pick. That's top three protected this year. Year, but the Pelicans are going to be great. You know, at least good. So yeah. we'll see. <clears throat> Let's move on to something that also happened in New Orleans this weekend. 
the NBA All-Star Game. It was moved out of Charlotte um, for a lot of political reasons and in uh, New Orleans. The West won 192-182, led by Anthony Davis, who scored a All-Star Game record 52 points on 26-39 shooting. Russell Westbrook got 41 points in 20 minutes. Kevin Durant got a triple-double, 21-10-10. Uh, for the East, Giannis led them, the Greek Freak from Milwaukee, with 30 points and an awesome poster of Steph Curry and another almost poster where Steph laid down. Um, what did you guys think of it? Not a lot of defense. Uh, I definitely thought it was interesting how Steph laid down on the ground <laughs> to avoid getting dunked on and then minutes later gets absolutely destroyed right, right, by Giannis. Right. And I also thought it was interesting that Westbrook and KD had that alley-oop. Oh, yeah. It was a big deal to everybody during the game. <laughs> Except for them. Yeah. And it, was, it was also interesting that KD beat Westbrook at his own game, getting a triple-double with 21 yeah. points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought the game was pretty good. Um, obviously, a lot of people are mad at the intensity of the game and the defense that wasn't there. Uh, I don't really care if it's that played that way for the first three minutes, even maybe a little, or the first three minutes, first three quarters, and yeah. then maybe halfway through the fourth quarter, then it ratchets up. It didn't happen this year. I was kind of bummed about it, but... Either way, I thought it was a pretty good game. Uh, obviously, you said Russell Westbrook with the 41 points. Obviously, he was the only one that didn't get the memo <laughs> to feed Anthony Davis and get him the MVP. Because uh, besides, Anthony Davis took like 39 shots, and Russell Westbrook was right behind yeah, him right. in 20 minutes just throwing up threes left and right. Um, I thought it was a good game all around. Uh, I think this proves to everybody that says there's no defense in the NBA that there is defense because otherwise games would be ending like this That's true. <laughs> in yeah, the that's NBA, true. showing how great the best in the world are making right. wide open shots all the time. And especially in the era of super teams where we're complaining about you know, great players being together, <laughs> they're not putting up 192 points, so there's definitely defense on <laughs> yeah. the court. Um, so moving on from the NBA, let's talk about a little college basketball. The season's winding down, we're getting real close to March Madness, there's about a week and a half left in the season. And right now, Gonzaga is still undefeated out in the West Coast Conference, 28-0. Top five are Villanova, Kansas, Arizona, and UCLA wrapping that up. And the last time a team was this, uh, went this late undefeated was Kentucky in 2015, and we know that the Badgers outed them in the Final Four. Um, so what do you guys think of the season so far? Just give me your, uh, your general ideas. Um, I think that uh, Gonzaga is fake. Obviously, <laughs> they uh, they play terrible teams in their conference. They're this good all the time. I think they will go undefeated. They will make it probably to the Sweet 16, lose there, maybe the Elite Eight. They, I, I like Nigel Williams-Goss. Nigel Williams-Goss is a really good player, uh, the point guard for Gonzaga. But other than that, I, I love Kansas. I think Kansas is really good with Josh Jackson and uh, Frank Mason. They the just third. keep winning. They are very good. Uh, they're probably going to win another Big 12 title, again, like the 13th or 14th straight. Um, I like Duke and I like Kentucky a lot, and I think they will meet in the championship and give us that championship that we all wanted. Yeah. Besides Badger, that the Badgers robbed us right, of right, right. a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I uh, definitely think that Gonzaga is a fluke. They are always the best team in their conference because they play absolutely no one in their conference. They'll obviously go undefeated and get to the tournament, get that one seed that they feel they deserve, and then they'll lose to some random four seed, five seed. <laughs> yeah. So the typical like Gonzaga run. Yeah. Yeah. That. And, okay. and then I think that the clear-cut favorite right now would be Villanova. I think yeah. that mm -hmm. Jay Wright is the best coach in college basketball, and I think that they'll, again, make a run to the Final Four and possibly the national championship. And I, Coach K? Better than Coach K. Okay. Um, Badgers are ranked 16th right now, and they're – Tied for the conference lead, so we'll see how that goes. Um, not sure how, how good they actually are. I think they're probably the best team in the Big Ten still, but, yeah. I mean, they're not as good as they have been in years past. Okay. Well, we're going to be right back with uh, midseason awards in the NBA, but let's take a look at a promo from the Com Club.
Welcome back to Sports Talk Live. We're now going to switch over to more NBA and talk about midseason awards, all-star games come and gone. We're getting to the last part of the season. Uh, let's just get right into it, talk about MVP at this point in the season. Miles, I know you feel pretty strongly about oh, one guy. Gary. I feel very strongly about James Harden. I think he makes his team better than Russell does, make the, uh, the Thunder, who is obviously the second choice for MVP or the first choice in a lot of people's minds, averaging that triple-double. Nobody's averaged a triple-double since Oscar Robertson, 1962 or 63. Uh, and it's amazing what he's doing. Yes, I'm not here to trash on Russell Westbrook. This isn't anti-Russell Westbrook. I just think James Harden, who's averaging 29.2 points per game and 11.5 assists a game, which leads the NBA, 8.3 rebounds, obviously not that far behind Russell in his numbers, accounting for around 65 points per game this year. And also, he has the Rockets as a three seed right now in the West at 40 and 18, and a lot of people didn't have him anywhere in the West this year. Uh, what he's doing with that talent around him, which is almost comparable to Russell's talent when Russell has him on pace to winning for winning about like eight or nine less games than Harden has the Rockets on pace for winning. So that's why I have Harden over Russell. Devin? Um, I'm going to have to go with Russell Westbrook because <clears throat> I feel like even though James Harden is performing out of his mind for the mm -hmm. Houston Rockets right now and he is the three seed in the, the Rockets, I feel like the Rockets organization did a better job than Oklahoma City did with putting players around with around Harden to make them a better team. Sure, like yeah. Eric Gordon's definitely a big player for them in the offense. And then mm -hmm. Mike D'Antoni is the perfect coach for Houston because they run that high tempo offense. Uh, Russell Westbrook doesn't have any really any support around him and he's still got the seven seed in the playoffs. He's got thirty two wins and he's five hundred or he's over five hundred in the league. So I yeah. definitely think with the <clears throat> stats that he has that he can win MVP. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, one other name that I would throw out there as far as guys that have a chance, Kevin Durant. I know we're trashing for going to the dubs, but he's averaging a stat line, 25.8 points, 8.3 rebounds, 4.9 assists, 1.7 blocks, and 1.1 steals per game. The only time in NBA history anybody's done that was Kareem in 75-76. Mm -hmm. So that's just... He's a dark horse coming in there, but we'll see. Uh, definitely hard in Westbrook. He's also shooting like 54, 55 percent. Yeah, so it's, it's that's insane. They're yeah. having, the <clears throat> that's Dubs are the having a great year. Had, yeah. Definitely. Uh, moving on to Defensive Player of the Year. Um, this is an award that kind of has been owned by Kawhi Leonard yes. in the last couple of years. But there's definitely an up and coming guy that, or up and coming guy that maybe has deserved it before. Um, who do you guys think? Devin, I'll start with you this time. Um, I'm going to go with Kawhi again. Okay. I think he is the best mm -hmm. defender in the N NBA. He's mm -hmm. the best perimeter defender in the NBA, and I'm not afraid to say that he's getting up there next to Scottie Pippen as one of the best defenders to ever play. Yeah. Um, I would say Anthony Davis. Uh, okay. He's averaging like two and a half blocks and around one and a half steals. He impacts the game so many, or on so many levels on the defensive end. He's yeah. long, he's fast, he's quick. Uh, I, I would also like to put uh, LeBron James in the – argument right. just because LeBron he's never won one really? yeah. but he's he has been all he's always been a very very good wing defender oh, yeah, uh, nice. always in the top in steals he's averaging about a block a game this year so I'd like to put LeBron in there because I don't think he gets enough attention for his defensive ability that he does that's true and that's something that I think else. a lot of the great players <laughs> have gotten recognition for Kobe uh, MJ have always been respected for their defense, right. and you're probably right that LeBron doesn't get enough credit for that. Yeah. Uh, another big name that probably had a right to it at least once already this year, Draymond Green is killing it out in uh, out west, and second in steals, he's just one steal behind the league lead, um, doing putting up some really good stats, and Rudy Gobert in Utah doing some amazing things out there, and if you're going to talk about a guy who's leading in blocks per game, He's got to be at least in the conversation. So we'll see on that. Um, talking about Rookie of the Year, though, I think this is probably a runaway for me. What do yeah. you guys think, Miles? Uh, I'm with you. I'm with the man that we just put up. I, people can't see it. But uh, Joel Embiid, I yeah. think he absolutely dominated. I called it, not to toot my own horn, <laughs> but I called this on my show with Kyle Pop. I believe, on our radio show, I said he will be the Rookie of the Year. Yeah. He's 
he, it's kind of like the Blake Griffin effect. He, Blake Griffin sat out for a whole year right. up and came in. His second year was his rookie year. Absolutely dominated the NBA more than any other rookie. And I thought with Ben Simmons being out, I didn't think there was another real, real contender for this award. Yeah. So I thought Joel Embiid sitting out those two years, being around the NBA, coming in, was going to dominate like he has. And I didn't expect it to this uh, amount, but he has really came in and dominated. Right, yeah. Uh, for the stats on Embiid, he's averaging the most... Uh, Blocks in the league per 36 minutes and per 100 possessions. He's averaging the most points, rebounds, blocks, and double-doubles among all rookies. Yeah. But he's only played 31 games, Devin, yes. compared to some of the I mean, top teams have played uh, over 55 games a season. Mm -hmm. Do you think that hurts his candidacy at all? I don't think it hurts his candidacy, but I definitely think it helps other players like Malcolm Brogdon, sure. Brogdon who is uh, coming for the Bucks and has definitely been that point guard that Jason Kidd wants and yeah. needs. Definitely, yeah. and he's shooting really well, Brogdon, this year. Um, definitely probably the dark horse candidate um, yes. behind... Uh, Joel Embiid doing all of this in, I believe, 25 minutes a game, yeah. obviously yeah. still on that yeah. minutes limit. So Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, from talking about Brogdon with the Bucks, let's talk about most improved player. This is also probably a no-brainer with the Bucks. It's probably Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yep. Um, he is improved on points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals, everything. Yes. And he's shooting an effective field goal percentage higher th at everything, twos, threes, and free throws. Is there any conversation here? Uh I would like to point out, I did have Giannis as my number one guy, but I think Devin Booker could make a case okay. for it. Devin Booker, uh, last year averaged around 16 points a game as a rookie, played very well, but this year has really stepped it up around 21 points a game, okay. uh, three rebounds, three assists. He's really stepped up his game. I don't think it's as much as uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yeah. Uh, I like Giannis for this award, but Devin Booker could definitely receive some uh, recognition for this one. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I definitely think that Giannis is the clear-cut favorite to win most improved player, but another player I had was Miles Turner for okay. the Pacers. Oh, okay. um, he's averaging five more points than he did last year with 15.6, and he's becoming a better player in just his second year. Sure. Um, and as a rookie, he shot 21% from behind the arc, and now he's shooting 37%, which is a huge, okay. as a center, that's huge. Yeah. Definitely. <clears throat> all I got, man. All right, man. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's Giannis, and he does things so flashy that that definitely right. helps your um, candidacy. People that aren't as hardcore about it are going to see you put yeah. up highlights every night. A 6'11", long, lanky point guard is something that a lot of people love to see. They call him the unicorn. The so, <laughs> unicorn. I mean, um, and we talked about this a little bit, six man of the year. Um, there's some candidates. I got two different guys that I think, but I want to hear what you guys, Devin, why don't you start with this? Um, I definitely have Eric Gordon. He's coming off mm -hmm. the bench, and he's averaging the second highest amount of points for Houston. Uh, he <coughs> also fits Mike D'Antoni's high-tempo offense, and mm -hmm. Harden can just dump him the ball and he's there to make the threes. He's also up there for most three-pointers made this season, and that definitely helps Houston in a league where you live by the three now. Definitely. Yep. Uh, I also have Eric Gordon. Right. No surprise here. I think he's by far and away, maybe Lou Williams a little close, but yeah. Lou Williams is on the Lakers who have won 19 games, so I don't think he's going to get the consideration. Yeah. Um, he's averaging 17.2 points per game, three assists, three rebounds for Eric Gordon. Also at shooting 38.5% from three, close to 40, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And he's made 184 threes, like Devin said. Um, that's fourth in the NBA behind Steph Curry and I believe Clay Thompson, Kyle Lowry. Some, yeah. I James think so. Harden. Oh, James Harden? Okay, and James Harden. So uh, he's dominating. He's coming off the bench. He plays like 20, probably four or five minutes per game. Plays perfect role next to James Harden and in yeah. that Mike D'Antoni offense. Definitely. Um, I am wearing a Lakers jersey. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give Lou Williams a little bit of love here. Um, he is leading the league in bench points right now and doing it in less minutes than Eric Gordon's playing. So if that was what I was going to say about that, that's... That's where I would stand with him, but Eric Gordon probably the, the leader in that. Mm -hmm. Our final award category, Coach and Executive of the Year. Um, I think we probably, we've mentioned the Rockets a lot, so would you guys say Mike D'Antoni is probably the favorite for that? Uh, yeah, I would definitely say Mike D'Antoni is the favorite, having the Rockets at 40 and 18, I believe. Third in the West. Uh, Nobody, like I said before the season, definitely not me. I didn't think they were going to win over 50 games. I thought they would make the playoffs, yes, with James Harden being as good as he is, but I would have them around the 7th or 8th seed. I didn't expect them to be that great. Uh, but with the talent around them, they play perfectly under Mike D'Antoni's system. And a lot of people might think or wouldn't have thought us 
talking about Mike D'Antoni as a Coach of the Year award winner a couple of years ago when he was coaching the Knicks. So you thought maybe that was going to be his last coaching job. He's come in. James Harden playing kind of that Steve Nash position that he had in Phoenix. Yeah. Playing it all, probably even a little better as he is a better scorer, not as good of a passer. But uh, playing fantastic in the Steve Nash role and with Ryan Anderson and Eric Gordon and Trevor Ariza and Sam Decker, all shooters around Sam James Harden. Gordon. And Clint Capella, just an athletic center that can go up and catch lobs and yep. dunk the ball for James Harden, Mike D'Antoni has really built the perfect offense for this team. Definitely. What do you think, Kevin? Um, I would agree that De Mike D'Antoni is definitely the coach of the year, but if I had to pick a dark horse, it would be Scott Brooks. Okay. Yes. Uh, he got fired from OKC because he couldn't get through that tough Western Conference, yeah. and he went to the Washington Wizards who struggled last year and missed the playoffs, and he has them as a three seed in the East, so I definitely think that he's the dark horse. It is a really impressive run, especially for a guy who – People thought it was that glass ceiling in the West was going to keep him out. Um, I also have, and this is probably going to be a bit of a layup, Steve <laughs> Kerr. Um, <laughs> the Warriors are first in the West again. They're 47 and 9. They're first in everything except defensive rating, and then they're second in defensive rating behind the Spurs. And, you know, it's kind of the thing where we say every year LeBron is in the MVP conversation because he's right. the best in the league. And yeah. I think every year, even if, you know, we give the coach of the year to a uh, coach who's brought a team from where we didn't expect them to be, yep. the top team in the league always has to be considered in that end too. And I think mm -hmm. what the Warriors are doing, maybe not as impressive as last year, but they're 47-9 and nine right now. That's yeah. a great yeah. year so far. I think the reason why he's not going to get the consideration is because he has Steph Curry, Klay yeah. Thompson, Kevin Durant, and Draymond Definitely. Green on Definitely. his team. Yeah, the depth isn't as much there, but when those guys can go out and they can score you 70 points in a game, yeah. like you don't need much after that. That's so that's probably why... He's not going to get the consideration, but you know, other than that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He made JaVale McGee a, a player in the NBA, so I I'm not sure chance. he did or Curry and Durant and yeah, Clay Thompson. JaVale did. McGee's real, guys. <laughs> All right, we're going to be right back uh, with Sports Talk Live, but let's take a look at a promo for the Cooley Region Humane Society. Each week, UW Lacrosse's student-run television station, WMCM-TV, sends out a group of students to film some of the most precious animals of the Cooley Region Humane Society in a segment we like to call Perfect Pets. The Cooley Region Humane Society offers a variety of programs and services at little or no cost to help both animals and people in our community. If you have found or lost a pet, are in need of training assistance, need cat behavior consultation, desire to volunteer, need to surrender your pet, or are looking to adopt a pet. The Cooley Region Humane Society offers this and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Adopt or become a volunteer today. To find out more about these services, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. The Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. We're moving on to the NHL, and some people in the studio have ideas, but I want to know what you guys think. The top teams in the league right now are the Capitals and the Wild in the East and the West. Mm -hmm. The Minnesota Wild, the closest team to us anyway. Yep. Um, a lot of great players in the league. Devin, what do you got on this? Um, I know that a lot of people on campus are very excited about the Wild being yes. one of the top teams in the NHL. Um, I think as long as Sidney Crosby is still playing in the NHL, the Penguins will always be contenders yes. to win the Cup. Especially with Malkin. Yeah. Um, I think the Wild playing this well is great. Uh, I like the Wild, but I'm a little concerned for all the Wild fans getting their hopes up because this is genuinely, the past couple of years it has been a trend where they play very well and then they absolutely collapse. Yeah. And I think that's another thing that's going to happen this year. They'll probably lose to Chicago in the, <laughs> in the playoffs again. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I know, but I'm <laughs> proud of the Wild for playing well. I just, I'm not sure they pass the uh, pass Chicago in the playoffs. I do like the Capitals a lot. I think this might be the year that Ovechkin actually. I'm pretty sure he has not won a Stanley Cup. No, and, they have never uh, been able to break through. So I think this might be the year he actually is able to break through that Eastern Conference and get to the NHL or to get to the Stanley Cup and me yeah. maybe win it. Yeah, and definitely the one thing that's a big deal about this season, though, is that the Red Wings have made the playoffs for 25 straight years. They're right now second to worst in the Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. That insane streak is probably going to come to an end. 
Um, it will come I'll shed a tear for that because I'm a Red Wings fan. <laughs> um, moving on to the NFL. Uh, Super Bowl has gone by. It is a while ago now, already a couple weeks past it, but we haven't had a chance to talk about it on WMCM. So let's talk about that insane 28-3 to comeback by the Pats. Uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah. We saw probably not the best catch in the NFL. Or the, cr the craziest catch was Julian Edelman. I think the David Tyree entire play was better. Sure. I just think the Edelman catch was better than Tyree's catch. Um, the uh, comeback by Tom Brady, the solidifying himself as the greatest of all time. Yep. Absolutely crazy game. Uh, loved every second of it. Thought it was amazing. Uh, yeah. Was that a comeback or a collapse? Um, I think it was just a complete choke. I think <laughs> that I think that Atlanta had it in their hands, ready to close the game out, and Kyle Shanahan's play calling completely yeah. just collapsed it. And <clears> that <throat> yeah. When they when Matt Ryan got sacked, and then they lost right. their ability to kick the field goal yeah only and five runs called after 28 to 3 yeah that was and there's been a lot of really really good articles written about that um that i've seen and every one of them come to the same conclusion that they gave it away they had it one more field goal and they were going to win it so um but don't yeah. we can't take anything away from the pats that was no. insane and they, probably they're the only team that could atlanta gave them the opportunity new england took advantage took of it. it you got to score all those points so all right um finally today MLB preview spring training starts this week. We're starting on uh, Wednesday in the Cactus League, Thursday in the Grapefruit League in Florida. What do you guys think? Um, to be honest, I'm not full on baseball <laughs> swing yet, but I do have a couple of things. Cleveland did get Edwin Encarnacion, a big bat for that third base uh, position for them. Could we see a Chicago Cleveland? Uh, uh, rematch in the World Series, Chicago bringing everybody back besides Dexter Fowler. They do lose Dexter Fowler, but basically are uh, bringing back Kyle Schwarbel. Um, yeah. And then also expect Bryce Harper. I expect Bryce Harper with a full off season of work uh, to come back and have a strong season this year after starting off so hot last year and completely falling off in the second half or yeah, later parts of the season. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see Bryce Harper hopefully come mm -hmm. back. He's definitely the most entertaining player in baseball definitely. to watch. Um, I think that a big team that could come in and be better than the Indians is uh, Boston. Okay. I think even though that they lost Big Poppy, I think they made a lot of offseason moves that will mm -hmm. help them get to the World Series and hopefully win it all. And yeah. look for the Twins to be absolutely terrible again. <laughs> <laughs> Twins began play on Friday with the Brewers. Uh, I'm, I'm a Braves fan. They start on Saturday, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Um, but it's, it is February. It's a little early to start yeah, talking baseball. It is a little bit. So with that, let's go to our rants today. We're going to start with Devin Rogan. <clears throat> um, so today I want to talk about the Badger basketball team. Um, the fact that they returned all their starters that mattered and they had so much potential going into this season, it's kind of scary that they can't score. And it seems like in all five of their losses that that was the same pattern over and over again. I like that on Sunday they beat Maryland by double digits and that <clears throat> I think that also means that they need to bring in Brevin Pitzel, Brevin Pritzel and play him a lot more cuz he brings an offensive spark that they desperately need. Yeah. Uh for my rant, I'm going to talk about people that continue to say that college basketball is better than the NBA. I need you to be quiet for a second. Please, I get that March Madness is amazing and great. Uh, yes, March Madness is better than the regular season of NBA, but the NBA regular season is still better than college regular season. And the NBA playoffs is better than March Madness, I'm sorry to say, especially when it comes down to the NBA finals. Uh, in college basketball regular season, it's all freshmen, all young players that still don't really understand how to play the ba game of basketball until right about now and starting to get into March. Um, College basketball, you see the same amount of defense. The people that say there's no defense in the NBA, like I said earlier, if there was no defense, people would games would end up 155 to 150. They don't. There's defense. It's just people in the NBA make more shots. <laughs> well done. Uh, I'm going to talk about something that nobody cares about but me. NASCAR, <laughs> it's back. Yes. Um, and if you listen to my radio show on uh, REQ, you'll know that. Um, Daytona 500 is this weekend. Dale Earnhardt Jr. returns to the series. There's no series or sport in the world where one guy matters and makes people tune in more than Dale Earnhardt Jr. Um, he, had a, he was out for six months with a concussion and is coming back, hopefully to bring a lot of eyes to the sport. Uh, new title sponsor with Monster, Monster Energy this year. And I think it's just a really interesting year. There's a lot of changes. A lot of things stay the same. And last year we saw Jimmy Johnson 
win his seventh championship, tying the record. He's going to go for eight. We'll see what happens. Well, that's it for uh, WMCN Sports Talk Live. Join us again the next Tuesday that we're on. And uh, we're on uh, Tampa's Channel 200, Charter Channel 989. Give me a